guarding PNG's biggest prison facility under darkness. And National Procurement Act now in effect. This is National MTV News with Meriba Tulo. A very good evening. Thank you for joining us. This is Tuesday's News. 2019 will see the Department of Finance continue with reforms to provide more transparency for the disbursement of public monies at the national, provincial and district levels. When addressing staff from the department today, Finance Minister James Marape called on all officers to work together to ensure funds were dispersed to all levels of government to allow for the delivery of services. Whilst challenges remain, Minister Marape is confident in his department and their ability to deliver over the next 12 months. We've started and embarked. I think we're now into the... Minister Marape addressed staff of the Finance Department in Port Mosby this morning to set out targets for this year. Exactly what we must do. According to the Finance Minister, 2019 will build on improvements from previous years in providing oversight for government funding from the national level to the provincial and district levels, funding of around 1.2 billion kina. I want us to have a real-time oversight as to what is being transacted right across our sub-national government levels. Uh, you know, 1.2 billion kina, the least, have been transferred from national government to the sub-national governments. Uh, and that's quite a substantial um, uh, pool of fund uh, for us as chief accountant of state uh, let us have the oversight into what is actually happening in the districts and provinces uh, to ensure that uh, compliance aspect and to ensure that uh, the, there's a consistency in delivery to the programs that the government ex expects of them. In recent years, reforms to its systems have enabled the department to streamline its processes and provide more visibility on how funds are being used at all levels of government. This has cut down on instances of fraud from various groups who used to congregate outside the department headquarter. There is no more a queue of crowd outside Wulupindi uh, where papers are being pushed for, and jostling for possible funding. In the last two or three years, we've removed the crowd out of Wulupindi uh, quite successfully, and we don't like to attract them back into Wulupindi uh, precinct. Uh, let's remain as macro managers of fund to the sectors. Let's get the departments to work in consistent with the budget. We have now rolled out to all the provinces. Finance Secretary Dr. Ken Nangan also highlighted improvements made, especially in regards to the rollout of the Integrated Financial Management System, IFMS, through the country. By the end of this year, the department aims to complete the rollout of IFMS to all provinces and districts. Major things, reforms that we've uh, achieved is the rollout of the Integrated Financial Management, which we have now rolled out to all the provinces, uh, provincial finance offices, what we remain is the uh, district finance offices, which we plan to conclude by the end of the year. Successful outcome. According to Secretary Nangan, improvements have also enabled finance to fully fund special intervention funds from 2018, the first time this has been achieved for the department in a working year. We've fully funded all the SIG programs, 10 million. The last bit of the 1.9 million is going out today. Uh, that is. In the, that is a record in the, in the, in the history of uh, our uh, sub-national funding. But whilst there have been noticeable improvements to its operations, there are still challenges that remain. Among them, allegations of corruption, which the department has taken steps to address through a corruption reporting hotline. And everyone within the finance department have been urged to report any corrupt dealings through this hotline. And amongst us, if someone offers us a favor, pick the phone call and report a person. If someone else offers us a bribe, uh, pick the phone and, uh, and report a person. Uh, we're not here to receive bribes or receive favors to do our job. We're here to do our job fair and freely. This year, the National Procurement Act comes into force. Passed by Parliament in September 2018, this act effectively abolishes the Central Supply and Tenders Board replacing it with the National Procurement Commission. This law provides revised procurement thresholds, giving local companies exclusive rights to bid for state contracts valued at up to 10 million kina. And I want us to make it work. Contracts below 10 million are strictly for local companies. And let me get it clear. Secretary Nagan, you have oversight as chairman. 
I want that law to come into fullest implementation as soon as possible as we speak. No contracts below 10 million must go to any foreign based companies unless the goods or services to be procured is not found in the country. Any contract between 10 to 30 million kina must have evidence of 50% uh, local partnership. I think it's about time our local companies are given prominence they deserve and to participate in contracts that are state-owned. Sections of the Bomana Correctional Center have been in the dark for the past two years. Four floodlights, meaning the corners of the prison walls, are not helpful as CS officers use flashlights to patrol the area at night. Staff say letters to high authorities to fix the lights have fallen on deaf ears. MTV's cadet reporter Tamara Pia Agavi and cameraman James Waula visited the prison grounds last night to file this story. The Bomana prison in the daytime looks quite normal as detainees go about the normal day-to-day -day routine. But when night falls, everything goes pitch black. The six floodlights on the towers both inside and outside the perimeter are not functioning. The lights are the main eyes of the CS officers guarding the prison. Duty officers use flashlights to walk around in the night during the recent heavy downpour. A tower light built by the CS officers near the main cells is sparing a little light. However, this is not enough. Inspector Joe Yamason says the darkness is posing threat with high chances of breakouts by prisoners and called on the Prime Minister and Correctional Service Minister to look into this. And we are calling upon the Prime Minister to direct the CS Minister to come down to Bombana and visit Bombana Jail and see for himself the situation and how we live in Bombana Jail. Like during the day, I say it's, you looks like, it, it looks like a prison, but night you find it hard to come in here because everywhere is total darkness. And that put our, puts our men on the risk, our CS officers' uh, lives are on the risk. The dark side experienced by Bomana is the same story for a handful of CIS facilities in the country. Concerns have been raised to those in higher power to improve lighting in CS institutions. The situation in Bomana is just a tip, a tip of an iceberg. You are seeing the whole country is in the same, same situation. I don't know for other uh, others in, in, in my region and other prisons in the country. Yeah. The lighting should be like that of NRL. When they play rugby league, you see the lights should be like that. <coughs> or PRL when they play rugby league. The lighting in the prison facility should be like that. But when you go up from the gate, you see that there's no lights. And in the compound, prisoner's compound, it is worse making the officers assigned for duties in the night, they don't go into the night patrols. They're scared of being attacked themselves or being bitten by snakes. In an interview yesterday with acting CS Commissioner Stephen Pokanis, he said Bomana will see some facelift because of increased funding in the 2019 budget. He says the prison lights is one top priority. In terms of uh, looking at this, uh, major infrastructure problems, I see 2019 as, as one of the very good year. Uh, for instance, the case with Bomana, if all goes well, uh, I would think by the first two months we should fix the electrical problems at Bomana. Uh, now that is only Bomana. Uh, we have other institutions like Baisu has also been uh, in darkness uh, because of uh, no maintenance work done to rectify the lighting problems. But for now, the dark poses threat as CS officers guard the walls of Bomana Prison. Tamara Pia Agavi, National MTV News. The Manam volcano again erupted this morning between 3 and 4 a.m. The Rabaul Volcanological Observatory confirmed the main crater produced phase of small ongoing eruption, producing lava flow and minor ashfall. The eruption subsided by midday today with no casualties reported. The observatory, meanwhile, has indicated that the potential for further eruptive activity is still high and has urged the people of Manam to be on alert. Four months ago, a minor eruption happened on the Manam volcano, displacing people and leaving them without food and clean drinking water. Following a week of continuous heavy rain and strong winds, the Weather Service says the worst has passed. 
Speaking to National MTV News, National Weather Service Director Samuel Maiha said there are indications that the country will be experiencing the normal wet season weather with the usual northwesterly winds from now on. After a week of heavy downpour, the weather is set to be normal for the next two to three weeks. We are in, a wet, in, the, in the wet season. So I think that's the most basic message is that we, we are in the wet season. But there are a couple of uh, what we in meteorological nodes that contribute towards the modifying of, of the wet season. They add to uh, in terms of uh, result. Speaking to MTV News, National Weather Service Director Samuel Maya assured the public that PNG will no longer be affected by the tropical cyclone. It is over with this um, tropical cyclone uh, penny. So I think now we are back down to the usual uh, northwest monsoons. Yeah, so basically uh, the warnings that we had earlier on, the gale force warnings are over. My has said the weather we are experiencing now is the normal wet season that occurs each year from December to February. Podivai, National MTV News. Still on the weather, ex-tropical cyclone Penny that hit Australia in the last week is said to be passing. However, another cyclone system formed, Cyclone Mona, is affecting countries in the Pacific. Tropical Cyclone Mona formed south of Fiji a few days after Cyclone Penny took course in Australia. According to reports from the National Weather Service, a few countries in the Pacific are being affected by the effects of Cyclone Mona. I think it just started northwest of Fiji and, uh, and then it was, when I last saw it, it was going directly towards, towards Fiji. Actually, there was a course for us and some of our staff who were supposed to travel to Fiji, I think they had to cancel that. Yeah, so <clears throat> with this tropical cyclone, it just affected Papua New Guinea, uh, Solomon, and Australia. Uh, maybe the south component of it, maybe New Caledonia is. You're watching National MTV News. We'll have more of the day's stories after these messages. Don't go away. Yes, I am. But it's more difficult to find something to choose. Not to choose something. Me no kai kai boy, me kai kai pique sasa. Technology is constantly evolving, creating opportunities to grow and connect globally. Telecom PNG provides you with the best innovative and flexible solutions. Our wide range in product portfolio includes fixed line business system. Fixed Broadband Internet Service Metro Fibre Network VSAT Service You can trust us to take care of your business solution needs Telecom PNG Always there MAPEX Training Institute Job oriented certificate in plant operator and motor vehicle training courses includes Mobile train, excavator, light motor vehicles, semi trailer, prime mover and many more School leavers grade 6, 8, 10, 12 and the working class. Enrollment is now open for January 27, 2019 intakes. For more information, call us on 323-2063 or email info at mapextraining.com.pg. In our harsh and vibrant landscape, Dulux Weather Shield is the perfect choice to protect your building against everything Mother Nature throws at it. Worth doing. Worth two lots. We didn't have money blong 500,000 kilo one time roots rice. Buy him tasol roots medium grain rice. Write him name, mobile number, na address blong you inside long empty bag or packet. Na put him go inside long entry bin, inside long old store close to long you. Buy he got six plan weekly cash draws, one time four plan lucky winner who sat by winning 50,000 kina grand prize. Promotion is start long 1st December 2018. He going up long 12th January 2019. Hurry up now, enter along with him cash money, one time roots rise.
Welcome back to National MTV News. One of the few trade store owners in Tepte on the border of Medang and Morbe says that he might close his business because the costs associated with running his business are becoming unaffordable. Paul Megal gets his supplies from Lay. But the rising freight costs over the last three years are crippling his business. He says he may have to shut down his small operation. Two days ago, Jack Megal brought in new supplies for a small trade store in Tep Tep. For many public servants and villagers here, his is the only store they get store food and fuel from. So suppose government he up him tax long, and this year 2019, he go on top meeting or some. Me by losing uh, trade stone, uh, me by making all Arab law work. But it's a business that's struggling to survive. For every trip, he spends up to 6,000 kina, with more than a third of the costs going to transport and accommodation. At the end of it, all he's left with is a tiny profit that keeps the business going. So, uh, time me kissing cargo coming in, um, uh, time me working my car, blow me, and me not going to win him 2,000. And he's uh, working profit and it's long. The Hamas spending 6,500, spending me working long and profit long and I need long, 1,000 and below. The cost of basic food stuff is very high compared to what you would get in an urban centre. Up to 10 kina for a packet of rice, 10 kina for a kilo of sugar. Customers in Teptep pay for the high freight costs and the taxes and the transport inefficiencies. Jack says with the recent increase in airfares, the trade store business may not survive in 2019. Scott Wyde, National MTV News, Lay. The Grade 12 online selection has had its positive and negatives for students in Grade 12 in 2018. While a private school in Port Mosby has seen the online selection allow for students to attend university, public schools in rural areas face several issues with the automated selection. Adelaide Sirox Curry with this story. It's the time of the year that grade 12 students and their family await the all-important news of being selected to continue further studies. The online selection has had its good and bad, and for Waigani Christian College, it has seen most of the 87 grade 12 students selected to colleges and four making it to tertiary institutions. Selected to teacher colleges and then other tertiary institutions around the place. So uh, higher education, we are yet to obtain the official results from them. So as soon as we have that, we should have uh, proper statistics too. Uh, but at the moment, uh, what came to light is that those students that uh, are selected to universities, this is the online watch them. So our school was also the first to tap into the online system. So we have this advantage and uh, theirs came out on, uh, on online. So we are able to obtain these results of which two of them are here. But other students around the country have had their issues. Grade 12 school leaver from Grace Memorial Secondary School in Waubulolo District in the Morabe province, Lynn Kenea, said the online system's two-day grace period was an inconvenience for students in the rural area who have low internet coverage. Come course, it's a, like a time lot of messy period there. Eh? Mm -hmm. And then you think it's just 22 provinces here. Maybe I'll get a quick of how much thousands of great travel. Maybe I'll online within like two days here. Uh huh. No. Change them this, I mean, make your dresses for me black and reapply here. All right. Now, time maybe I'll go in and kind of say, network effectively, I'm all pick up. But maybe I'll kind of say, network in a sub became good there. And maybe I'll have a problem. Lynn also outlined that the online selection gave no options for self-sponsorship of students and only for Tessa's scholarship. Another guardian of a grade 12 student, Ben Juk, said his small brother, who scored a GPA of 3.2, was not selected for his first choice and selected for his second choice at the Divinewood University. But Divinewood University advised him he wasn't selected and not on their list. Yeah, but they told us that he was not a requirement to try to drop in. So at this moment, has he been selected to, I mean, confirmed to attend any university this year? No. 
Could would you be able to share with me um uh, what gradings he got? Oh God, he got it. First subjects are history, history with a all of his subjects he got beat in it. Other students we spoke to have the same issue of scoring required GPAs but not being selected. One student applied to a teacher's college with a GPA of above three points, yet was not selected. MTV News has contacted the Department of Higher Education for comments, which we expect tomorrow. Adelaide Sirox Kari National, MTV News. Meanwhile, the Waigani Christian College has successfully produced its first batch of students for further studies into higher learning institutions in the country. The school has been taking in dropouts who have not made it into mainstream education system. With our school, so we. Uh, the Waigani Christian College will now, for the first time, have four of its students attending tertiary institutions for studies this year. The school is a private-run institution that takes in student dropouts to continue their education in the school. The founder and director of the school, Benjamin Mool, shared his excitement about the achievement. This year, last for the last year, grade 12 student, you know, I'm very proud that with some of our students, they went to university. In 2018, the school successfully graduated its second batch of grade 12 students and now has seen positive results of its students being selected to higher institutions. Principal Abukare Kaupa is pleased with the performance of the students. By to say that if they were going to be dropout or if they were going to be failures, this is all wrong. Uh, students have, you know, special problems. They are, you know, we all, we really need to understand uh, why they cannot continue school and then if there is any chance of putting them back on track so that they can uh, continue their education by all means we have to and that's what we have been doing. Among the four, others have been selected into technical and teaching colleges throughout the country. Three have been selected to attend the University of Papua New Guinea while one to Divine Word University in Medang. I'll be taking up business. My mom like my whole family, the business people, they work uh, in the bank, so it's so my, my dream to become one of them. At UPNG, I'll be taking journalism and public relations. Yes, yes, I like writing, I like writing. Uh, only in the mic, no, I think I like being in front of the TV, to, to showing up on the TV to so Let's see where that goes. Elizabeth Guka, National MTV News. This year, we'll see more farmers in Central Province joining the Ilimo Dairy Farm Maize Outgrow Program. As the Ilimo herd grows to meet increasing local demand, the need to source feed locally grows as well. On December the 23rd, 2018, the Daisama community in Dora District began planting the newly ploughed fields of two hectares for this year. It takes approximately 100 to 120 days until the maize is ready for harvest. Business Development Manager Galit Tamer says if local farmers can grow maize, Ilimo will buy it. The local dairy is now moving into a wider product line of ice cream, yogurt and dairy snacks, which will be on the shelves of shops in Port Mosby later this year. Alcohol abuse is an everyday problem in Leh, according to Leh's Metropolitan Commander Anthony Wagambi Jr. Mr. Wagambi said cases of rape, murder and serious wounding reported at the station have often been related to alcohol, particularly homebrew. At Anger Hospital, up to 300 alcohol-related deaths were also reported by the Accident and Emergency Unit. Cases related to the abuse of alcohol every day. Up to six out of every ten cases reported at the Lay Central Police Station are due to alcohol-related incidents. Metropolitan Superintendent Anthony Wagambi says people abuse both legal and illegally made alcohol. But the worst of it all is the, is the illegal alcohol. That's the one which causes a lot of problems. In 2017, Enga Hospital recorded over 300 deaths from drunk driving. Out of the 2,500 cases of injuries caused by interpersonal violence, more than half were alcohol-related. Head of Accidents and Emergency Unit Dr. Alex Piawi says it is a serious concern for medical staff. Alcohol-related injuries, uh, I term them, is really unnecessary, and it puts a lot of strain on our limited resources. We don't have very much uh, resources in our public hospitals. Depends on the public. 
to for the public to report. When it's a public reports, police will attend to it. Philia Pisep, National MTV News, Lay. A 47-year-old woman in Lay who graduated with a grade 12 certificate through distance education says she plans to go to a teacher's college this year. Francisca Horia, a mother of four, graduated with students much younger than her. She said her desire to become an elementary teacher inspired her to get an education. 47-year-old Francisca Huria completed a grade 12 education at the Lay Community College last year. She said her desire to teach elementary students caused her to complete a grade 12 education. Francisca said it was challenging to learn amongst students younger than her. Francisca Huria is a mother of four and a housewife. She helped to teach at the SDA Church Sabbath Elementary at Kamkumung for five years. She then enrolled to complete her grade 12 education at the Lake Community College. She said she is happy with her achievements and looks forward to going to a teacher's college next year. Meanwhile, her family commended her achievements and looks forward to supporting her in the future. I'm a big proud Atribim, na we lot of things we go back to Papa God, let me help him and bring him this far now. Lo help him, lo me plus family, but me plus support him. Lo um 2020, I'm told to go in lo and plus teachers college, me plus support him. Mary Boy Nigani, National Limited News, Lay. Morobe Province will now have five new schools this year. These include four high schools in Kabum and the Tewai CSE district, as well as a vocational center. Morbe Provincial Program Advisor for Education, Keith Jiram, said the schools were approved by the National Education Department and have been registered. The Malahang Technical and Kabum High School are two schools that also had their status change from high school to secondary schools this year. We managed to have the, six, uh, the new schools approved. Uh, um, Buana Lutheran, Bonsil, Komba, Kabum Vocational, Sauno Lutheran, they will do the, um, the first intake of grade 9 this year. And we are privileged that we are able to have the schools um, approved by the uh, Department of Education. However, the process is, is still in progress. Um, but importantly, is we have the schools um, approve its registration. You're watching National MTV News. When we come back, we take a look at stories making headlines overseas. No can try long pillai one time die. Time family belong you, it go other side long solwara. No can call up long dingy where Emmy pull up in his or call up suppose only drink beer. No can call up suppose whether it bugger up or no got extra zoom or what a belong drink is done. All get a time wearing life jacket. Second, suppose one top belong you, it come back all right. Time only go aside, long solvara. This fella talks it, it come long NMSA. The IPI Group is PNG's most innovative, dynamic and diverse logistics company. Totally focused on delivering outstanding service. Our diversified divisions span from major warehousing, bulk fuel and road transport, to large-scale commercial catering. The IPI group of companies will be your partner, supplying tailor-made logistic solutions. Let the cold, misty mountains of the highlands welcome you to our peaceful surroundings and fresh air. At the Juwaka Mission Resort, we guarantee safety and comfort with a 24-hour security and standby genset and solar. You are our number one priority with premium rooms or multi-channel and great housekeeping, ensuring you feel at home away from home. With a restaurant and bar and a private lounge all for your needs, our services extend to airport transfers and hire cars and a spacious conference center that caters up to 200 people. Juwaka Mission Resort. You know us when you're here. 
Winim Hot Money Blong 500,000 Kina One Time Roots Rice. Buy him tasol roots medium grain rice. Write him name, mobile number, na address blong you inside long empty bag or packet. Na put him go inside long entry bin inside long old store close to long you. Buy he got six plan weekly cash draws. One time four plan lucky winner who sat by winning 50,000 Kina grand prize. Promotion is start long 1st December 2018. He going up long 12 January 2019. Hurry up na enter long win him cash money. One time roots rice. Welcome back to National MTV News. Turning overseas now, eight migrants who travelled across the English Channel in an inflatable dinghy have been picked up in South Coast England by border officials. They are the latest group to have made the journey across the Channel and the British government has promised to step up patrols. The young men look cold and disorientated as they were picked up at the side of a road in Kent this afternoon. We came across them as Border Force officials took them in. I managed to ask one simple question. Are you okay? Are you okay? Just keep him in the wall. They had walked miles and expressed their exhaustion. How are you feeling? Through their eyes. They were medically checked and taken away by immigration officials, all watched by astonished local people. It's happening, isn't it? So they're not. It's not stopping. So. Yeah, very scary. It was this tiny dinghy that brought the eight men across the English Channel this morning. And this adaptive plastic container, their only way to bail out water. What today's landings also represent is the restart of these journeys. There haven't been any for the past week. This landing comes five days after the Home Secretary Sajid Javid visited Dover, saying more ships are being brought in to stop migrants crossing. We spent several hours in the Channel over the weekend to see if those new measures were in place. Our skipper did find some suspected sightings of migrants. Matt, what have we got here? Um, well, at the moment, uh, it seems that the, um, the border force boat is heading towards Dungeness and also HMS Mersey. So it looks like there could be something going on um, around that area or even maybe even on the beach. But this was a false sighting. Unlike the eight who did make it today, with a ninth man not seen here, arrested on suspicion of helping them. A Syrian refugee who spent three years in detention in Nauru and on Christmas Island has finally been reunited with his family, not in Australia, but Cambodia. The refugee last saw his wife and kids seven years ago. He accepted a deal to restart his life in Cambodia after he said the Australian government promised to help get his family back together. This is the moment Abdallah Zalgani had been dreaming of. Reuniting with his two sons, two daughters and his wife after nearly seven years apart. There were no words as the family embraced, only tears of relief and joy. Every day I think about first meeting with my family. Because seven years is a long time. Father, can you... Being reunited after seven years is the happiest moment of my life. I hope we never get separated again. The reunion continued at the restaurant Abdullah set up in Phnom Penh. It's been a long time since the family shared a meal together. When war broke out in Syria in 2011, they fled to Lebanon. But the journey didn't stop there for Abdullah. He left his loved ones and went to find a permanent home. From Lebanon, he travelled to Egypt, then to Malaysia and Indonesia, where he boarded a boat headed for Australia. 
but it was intercepted by authorities and he spent more than three years in offshore detention centres on Christmas Island and then Nauru. Eventually, he chose to move to Cambodia under the Australian government's $55 million refugee deal. The government of Australia uh, promised me around when I arrived in Cambodia four months, my family coming. But the reunion took much longer. When asked why it took two years to reunite the family and if the Australian government would be providing any ongoing support, the Department of Home Affairs declined to comment on individual cases, saying that's a matter for the Cambodian government. A spokesman for Cambodia's refugee department said he was unaware of the Zalgani family's case. The agreement that brought the family back together has now been scrapped. The family are adjusting to life in Cambodia, a future they're determined to face together. Dangerous chemicals stored at factories around Melbourne's northern suburbs are being removed due to safety concerns. Authorities started investigations after a toxic chemical waste was discovered last year. Victoria's health and safety regulator WorkSafe has decided to take over the cleanup of eight sites in Melbourne's north where large volumes of chemical waste was discovered last month. Now the discovery of these chemical stockpiles was the result of an investigation into last year's West Footscray toxic chemical fire. And today's decision comes after weekend testing found highly flammable liquids including industrial solvents in the waste at these eight sites which are not being stored properly. Now, authorities are concerned about the risk to public safety and for that reason they've decided to take over control for the clean-up to be the safest and quickest that it can be. Now, the clean-up is still some time away with crews still trying to gain access to these factories. Earlier we heard from Marnie Williams from WorkSafe who described just what crews are dealing with. We don't know the full quantity of uh, chemicals on that site other than it is floor to ceiling, wall to wall, stacked drums of containers containing a whole swathe of waste chemicals. Now at the moment at these sites there is 24 hour security guards. That will continue throughout the operation. The Environmental Protection Authority is also conducting regular air monitoring at these sites while work, WorkSafe is also working with businesses in the area to make sure that there are no ignition sources nearby. The cleanup itself is likely to take many months. However, at this stage, we don't know just how long that will be. It will depend largely on what's inside these factories. Authorities are saying that significant resources will be thrown at this issue so it is resolved as quickly and as safely as possible. The clean-up bill from this lengthy clean-up operation is still unclear. However, authorities say they will be seeking to recover the costs from whoever is responsible. Here with National MTV News this Tuesday, we go for a break. When we come back, some sporting updates in Trukai Sports. Don't go away. In our harsh and vibrant landscape, Duhox Weather Shield is the perfect choice to protect your building against everything Mother Nature throws at it. Worth doing, worth Duhox. Are you looking for something to chew? Yes, I am. But it's more difficult to find something to choose. Not to choose, I'm picking. Me no kai kai boy, me kai kai pique sasa. Mapex Training Institute. Job oriented certificate and diploma in business courses includes human resource management, business management, accounting, information technology, and many more. For school leavers, grade 10s, 12s, and the working class. Enrollment is now open for February 4, 2019 in Tates. For more information, call us on 323-2063 or email info at mapxtraining.com.pg. Bomb chicka wow wow. Bomb chicka wow wow. Bomb chicka.
go wow, 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 wow. We've improved the formula. New links get added. Bomb chica, wow, wow. MTV is currently outsourcing for suitable candidates who are eager to join our expanded MTV Productions team in the role of producers and or presenters. If you have a passion for creative writing, working with cameras innovative, love entertainment, have a buzz in creativity, have a love for visual storytelling, great communication skills and enthusiastic in learning new things, then we want you. This is your chance to join a vibrant team producing and writing for various local productions, especially for Kids Corner. Experience in TV producing or similar or have a media background is preferable. Good strong work habits and the ability to work under pressure and meeting deadlines is a must. Attention and send your applications to MTV HR Manager, PO Box 443 Barocco NCD or email to hr at mtv.com.pg. Applications can also be hand delivered to our main office at Garden City Level 2 Barocco. Only shortlisted applicants will be contacted for an interview. Two Kai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. We begin with an update in the NSL. New entry into the National Football League, Kagua Erave Football Club, is serious about its participation in the semi-professional competition. Selection trials were held at Kagua Station over the weekend to recruit players for Kagua Erave FC. Coach Steven Mune is adamant the football club will field a very strong team despite being new to the competition. Mune says the next two weeks will be for training and preparation for the upcoming season. Six associations in the Kagua Erave district participated at the trials for Kagua Erave FC. The Rugby League and the PNG Rugby Football League aims to strengthen its junior development programs. With various corporate houses partnering with the PNG RFL, there are plans to invest more in junior development to improve the standard of rugby league in the country. Junior development is important in any sport. For rugby league in PNG, in order to be successful in the SP Hunters, Kumuls and Orchids programs, the PNG RFL has decided to invest more in the grassroots game and junior development. We believe that the future of the game relies in investing at that level. You teach the right skills, you teach the right attitudes, discipline, culture. Uh, the, the, the young ones can grow into better athletes and better people. In the past, there was no guaranteed pathway for rugby league players in PNG. But with the SP Hunters program and women's national team, the Orchids, being created, this has set a platform for young players who aspire to play competitive football. We develop the elite programs at the top uh, to provide some sense of direction for the uh, grassroots game to grow. Now that we've got the top of elite program uh, kind of structured, we're going down to the grassroots, to the schools program. The junior development programs start from the mini mode level through to the national schools rugby league competition. Investing in junior development teaches young players to learn the game at a younger age and improves the standard of competition in all levels. PNG RFL, in partnership with NRL PNG, will be carrying out these different programs throughout the country. Elijah Lavette, National MTV Sports. Don't go anywhere. We'll have more of Trukai Sports after these short messages. Trukai Sports. Let the cold, misty mountains of the Highlands welcome you to our peaceful surroundings and fresh air. At the Juwaka Mission Resort, we guarantee safety and comfort with a 24-hour security and standby gen set and solar. You are our number one priority with premium rooms or multi-channel and great housekeeping, ensuring you feel at home away from home. With a restaurant and bar and a private lounge all for your needs, our services extend to airport transfers and hire cars and a spacious conference center that caters up to 200 people. Juwaka Mission Resort, you know us when you're here.
Are you serious? Is this the fastest you can go? Get out of here. Internet speed with Telecom PNG. I repeat, Telecom PNG is the fastest. The fastest here in PNG. So connect today to experience the difference. Telecom PNG, always there. Mapex Training Institute. Job oriented certificate in plant operator and motor vehicle training courses includes mobile train, excavator, light motor vehicles, semi trailer, prime mover, and many more. For school leavers, grade 6, 8, 10, 12, and the working class, enrollment is now open for January 27, 2019 intakes. For more information, call us on 303 2063 or email info at mapextraining.com.pg. They continue to invade our homes. Disrupt our livelihoods and threaten our health. But we can stop this cycle of destruction. Reach for Morty's fast knockdown multi insect killer. Our trusted technology knocks down and kills flying and crawling insects fast. Trusted technology that kills fast. And at night, you can rely on Morty calls to repel mosquitoes and protect your family. Choose Morty for trusted family protection. More smart, more safe, Morty. The Big Bash League is back. Bigger and better. Don't miss all the action. Win a share of 500,000 kina with Roots Rice. All you need to do is buy any Roots medium grain rice, write your name, mobile number and address on the bag or packet and drop it in entry boxes in stores nationwide. There'll be six weekly cash draws with four lucky winners walking away with the grand prize of 50,000 kina each. Promotion starts 1st December 2018 and ends 12th January 2019. Hurry and enter for your chance to win cash with Roots Rice. Welcome back to Trukai Sports. To cricket overseas now, the Black Caps have swept the one-day international series with Sri Lanka after a commanding victory in the third match in Nelson. A glorious day at Saxton Oval, foreshadowing a glorious batting display for New Zealand. The Black Caps unperturbed by losing Guptill and Munro early, with Ross Taylor and Kane Williamson both reaching half centuries. <laughs> And when Williamson had a brain explosion after raising the bat, Henry Nichols joined Taylor in the middle. The fun only just beginning. You've got to find if he has now. How fast is this outfield? It is lightning fast. Nichols reaching his half century in the blink of an eye, with Taylor belting Sri Lanka all around the ground. Whipped away over mid wicket. One bounce and four from Ross Taylor. Taylor going into the history books soon after. Down the ground. He'll get it. He'll get it, Ross Taylor. He's in magnificent form. 20th ODI century for New Zealand. He fell for a magnificent 137 after another short flurry, receiving a warm reception on his departure. Leaving Nichols to continue the assault on Sri Lanka's bowlers. The left-hander savouring his maiden ODI ton in short time, bringing up the milestone off just 71 balls. The Black Caps finishing their 50 overs on 364 for four. Nichols unbeaten on 124 off just 80 bruising balls. That is just the most amazing display of batting I've seen for quite some time. Sri Lanka getting off to a flyer in their unlikely chase, but hampered midway through by a controversial run out. I've got the bat on the line and that decision is out. Despite being suddenly on the back foot, Pereira for a while able to hit the visitors out of a hole before being sensationally stopped in his tracks by Martin Guptill. Here is it a chance? Oh yes! Wow, Martin Guptill, that's more like Sri Lanka crumbling in the end, all out for 249, the Black Caps winning by 115 runs. To tennis Kiwi number one, Ruben Statham pulled off an incredible comeback victory in his own backyard and treated crowds to one of the greatest upsets ever witnessed at the tournament. 
Kiwi number one Ruben Statham's used to the underdog title. That's a good start, a confident start. The 31-year-old started with a bang, stunning sixth seed Hyun Chung in front of a home crowd. The Korean too strong though, racing out to win five straight games. Oh, that's a beauty. Statham's hopes of advancing looked out of reach. The chances of the world number 310 turning the match around seemed impossible. But the Kiwi's no stranger to pulling off upset victories. Oh, yes! That's commitment. This incredible winner spurring Statham on to win six games in a row and to take the first set. There it is! Statham wasn't even in the tournament's qualifying draw. Thanks to Thomas Burditch pulling out of the classic, the Kiwi got a shot. Oh, he nailed it! Chung had no answers. Statham, unbelievable. Oh, he's doing it! And for the first time since 2015, a New Zealander was breaking through to the second round. To play my home tournament and uh, start off with uh, one of my better wins of my career is, is something very special. The thrills didn't end there for Kiwi fans. The modern-day king of Stanley Street, David Ferrer, up against the well-performed Dutchman Robin Haase. Turn back the clock. The Spaniard storming through the first set, 6-2. A scorching 34 degrees on centre court and Ferrer was on fire. Hasa just fuming. In their two previous matches, Hasa dropped the opening sets only to go on and win. It wasn't looking likely this time. Oh, again. 6 1 in the second, a comprehensive straight sets victory to start his farewell tour. And that's it for Trukai Sports. We go for a break now. When we come back, the weather details for the next 24 hours. Stay tuned. Trukai Sports. True Kai Sports. Win a share of 500,000 kina with Roots Rice. All you need to do is buy any Roots medium grain rice, write your name, mobile number and address on the bag or packet and drop it in entry boxes in stores nationwide. There'll be six weekly cash draws with four lucky winners walking away with the grand prize of 50,000 kina each. Promotion starts 1st December 2018 and ends 12 January 2019. Hurry and enter for your chance to win cash with Roots Rats. At IPI Catering, we understand the intricacies of the environments in which we work. Providing innovative, fresh and creative catering solutions. Our experience and commitment is a winning combination. Delivering great food, Anywhere and anytime. IPI Catering, part of the IPI group of companies. Do not play with death when your family goes out to sea. Do not get on an overloaded dinghy or if alcohol is being consumed. Do not get on a dinghy in bad weather or if there is no extra Zoom or drinking water. Always wear a life jacket. Ensure your loved ones return safely when going out to sea. This message is brought to you by NMSA. Coming in 2019. So 2019, keep tuning in to your number one to watch, MTV. In our harsh and vibrant landscape, Duhok's Weather Shield is the perfect choice to protect your building against everything Mother Nature throws at it. Worth doing, worth Dulux. The weather details were proudly brought to you by Dulux, celebrating 50 years in PNG 
and the only paint made in PNG. A look at the weather forecast in the southern region for the next 24 hours. Port Mosby, rain and showers, the same in Daru. Drizzle and showers expected in Kerma, rain and thunderstorms in Alota, and rainy periods over the next 24 hours in Popandeta. The weather details were proudly brought to you by Dulux, celebrating 50 years in PNG and the only paint made in PNG. And before we go, tomorrow will mark one year without one of Papua New Guinea's rugby league greats whose life was cut short last year, dying at the tender age of 23 years old. The family of Kato Otio have embarked on ensuring his dream comes to fruition, his wish of building his mother a home. Light strokes of the paintbrush and a timid roll of paint. Final touches of Canberra Raiders Green, a startling reminder of the man who was part of the club and a son who wanted this house built for his mother. As the kitchen and the living room take shape, family gather to help finish the work and to admire the house. A home for his beloved mother was what Kato Otio had dreamt of accomplishing. But only his mother, close family and siblings are left to witness his dream becoming a reality. The Kumul Center died of heat stroke last year on the 9th of January 2018. Tomorrow will mark one year without the young talent. The MTV Sports News team visited the family today to see a promise being fulfilled. Built over the sea at Tatana village on stilts, it is only accessible by a rickety yet stable boardwalk. The family have replaced their old house of 13 years. Pictured here, it was at the same location. The family had to move to their grandparents' home for the construction to begin. Kato's family had lived in their old home for 13 years. With no flywire, the old house had always been tormented by rain and strong winds, a canvas used to block the forces of nature. Kato's mother Joyce was sent at home, but big sister Mary Otio was glad to take us in and show us around the house, which the family had promised to build after tremendous support from the public and his two overseas rugby league clubs, Canberra Raiders and the Witness Vikings, who contributed to making Kato Otio's dream of building his mom a house, a reality. So sad for us because it was his dream to build my mom's house, but unfortunately my mom is doing it for him. Kato's mother never knew of her son's dream of building her a house, only learning of his plans through the media after he had passed on. Mari says it is painful for the family, not having Kato around, to see this house being built, but it was good that their mother had taken up the cause to fulfill her son's dream. If he was here, we don't know how the house would be like. It's just because he's not here, this is how my mom built this house from all those contributions that people donated to this house. And we thank all those people who donated. May the good Lord bless them and their families also. On the anniversary of his death, the family will be laying a headstone at the grave of Kato Otio at his final resting place tomorrow at his Tatana village. The house will also be blessed by the Reverend and the guests invited for the ceremony tomorrow will have a chance to go in and see the house. Fideli Sukina, National MTV Sports. And that story ends National MTV News for this evening. On behalf of the MTV News team right around the country, pleasant viewing. Good night. This news program was proudly brought to you by Paradise Foods and Paradise Beverages. It's bedtime. Fresh, 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 two times a day. Fresh, fresh, fresh to keep cabbages away. Fresh, 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 two times Remember a day. Remember to brush your teeth fresh before you go to bed. Good night, kids.